So we've seen the first eight episodes of Stargirl's first season. And um, so far, I've, I've got a lot of thoughts on them. But the season was just renewed for season two. It was airing on both DC Universe and the CW, but for season two now, it's going to be airing just on the CW, and it won't be on DC Universe at all. Whether that means the show will be going to HBO Max after it airs or whatever is probably likely since the Netflix deal is more or less over. But um, this could change a lot of things for the show. I know a lot of people are saying it's not going to change anything. That's not true. Like, it might still have a bit more funding than the other CW shows, especially if it's going to HBO Max. It'll probably be funded somewhat by HBO Max, but... If you look at Doom Patrol, you look at Swamp Thing, and now you look at even Stargirl, their budgets are huge, and a show airing on the CW isn't going to get that amount of budget if it's solely airing on the CW. Um, so we are going to see a decrease in stuff. It might not be crazy big, and it might not be, not be too noticeable, but people are saying things aren't going to change at all. It is. I mean, look at Supergirl Season 1. Supergirl Season 1 looks more expensive, cinematic. Um, it's Quality-wise, it's not great, but it still looks more expensive and cinematic than any of the other CW shows, it looks very unique. Same with Stargirl. Stargirl, you can tell it's not a core average show just because how unique it looks and how expensive it looks. Same thing was true for Supergirl Season 1. Um, and as soon as Supergirl moved to Season 2, it ended up getting that Arrowverse look to it, which, it's it's good. It's just, you can tell it's an Arrowverse show because of certain things. And um, I have a feeling Stargirl's going to end up falling into that. But um, the writers are still great, and the writers aren't going to change, so I think we'll still be getting some great storytelling. I was actually going to do this video after last week, after episode 7, since that was technically the halfway point of the season. Even with how it ended, it felt kind of like a mid-season cliffhanger. But um, I'm very happy I waited to this week, because my opinion on the show has kind of done somewhat of a 180 um, after seeing the newest episode. So there are going to be spoilers in here for the first eight episodes if you haven't seen them. I'll try and kind of stay relatively spoiler free, kind of just touch on big things. But yeah, um, so there's been a lot of talk about the show about how good it is. And there's certain people in the DC community who are talking about how this is the best DC TV show to come out of DC in a while. Uh, I'm not going to dispute that. I'm not going to say it's wrong because, you know, art is subjective and all of that. But... I don't think it's that good. I don't think it's Flash Season 1 or Season 2 good. I don't think it's Smallville good. I don't think it's... It sure has some elements of Flash Season 1. It has some elements of Smallville Season 1. I don't think they're comparable at all, though. I think there's far too many differences to compare these kind of stuff. I can't really think of what I would compare Stargirl to. But um, it definitely stands out from the other DC TV shows, mainly in how huge the fight scenes are and how good the effects are. Like, there's a fight scene at the beginning of Episode 1, um, which involves the JSA versus the ISA. And it's crossover level amazing. It's like, it's something you would see in the Arrowverse crossovers rather than in an everyday episode of the Arrowverse. But it's not even like, well, that probably is the biggest fight scene we've seen on the show yet. Every fight scene we've seen on the show is somewhat on par with that. The effects we're seeing are on par with that. It's like every episode we're getting crossover level fights. And... That's something that definitely makes it stand out from the rest, plus the costumes are amazing, costumes that are reminiscent of the JSA. Um, but one of my huge problems with the show, I guess, is kind of the dialogue and the how things are written. Certain characters as well are not near as good as I'd want them to be. Like, there are more unlikable characters in this show than there are likable characters, and that's a problem. Um, now, like I said, Episode 8 did start to clear up a lot of these problems. The dialogue in Episode 8 was very solid, and I didn't actually dislike any characters in episode 8. I felt every character was starting to grow into their own roles in the in episode 8, but episodes 1 to 7, for every amazing scene or for every really fun and entertaining scene, there was at least one cringy scene or a scene that was filled with dialogue that was kind of making you go, why is it written like that? Um, same with characters like Courtney. There's some moments where Courtney is just so, so unlikable. Um, I don't know what it is about it, but I think it's the, just the way she's written. But it's like, from the get-go, Melissa Benoist is Kara, Grant Gustin is Barry, Stephen Amell is Oliver, Kate Lotz is Sarah, um, even Ruby Rose is Kate Kane. All of these characters were pretty likable from their very first episode. Courtney has taken seven to eight episodes to finally start to grow on me. And so my friends I've been talking to have also said the same thing, where Courtney's kind of not the standout she should be in the show. She kind of falls into the background. Like, for example, Yolanda, who's the new Wildcat, Rick, who's the new Ironman, Pat as well. All these characters are infinitely more likable and just 
better, funner to watch, I guess, than Courtney is, which is a which is an issue. Your main character should be the most likable and the most well-written character on the show, and that's definitely not helping. And um, but like I said, episode eight did start to clear up a lot of those problems and issues with me. But like that's what I'm that's what I think separates this apart from Flash and Smallville. I'm not saying Flash and Smallville had unlikable characters. I'm not saying that they didn't have the cringy dialogue, but it definitely wasn't to this extent. Like. I can't remember in Flash season 1 times where I would be spending half the episode just wondering why it was written like this, and nowadays I definitely do because Flash isn't the show it used to be, but back in season 1 and 2, there was far more solid dialogue than there was bad dialogue, and that seems to be the, the difference here. But the amazing effects, the big budget, and how good the fights look definitely makes up for that. Um, on top of that, Beth, who is the new Doctor in Midnight, she's she definitely started growing me a little bit more in Episode Eight, but she's still definitely one of the weaknesses of the show. At least, at, at least out of the the four new uh, JSA members, she's definitely one of the huge weak links. But I do think the episode has been improving every episode. I did think Episode One was one of the best episodes, but Episodes Two, Three, Four, they kind of middled a little bit but then from episode 5 onwards the show has felt like it's been getting better and better and better every episode um also i think that kind of focusing one episode on one certain character is pretty good it's something that i actually would have liked the arrowverse to do because what the arrowverse shows do they kind of just take one episode and focus that on one character maybe once a season like once a season we might get an episode focused on one of the villains but it definitely is a one season kind of thing. With this one, like what they're doing where every episode is kind of focused on a new character in a way. Like of course we still have Courtney and Pat at the forefront, but they're helping another character or we're seeing the episode from the point of view of another character, which I really do like. I think that that's something the that Arbor shows could definitely learn from. But um, it has been improving a lot. It's definitely one of the better first seasons of a DC TV show, I want to say. So um, it's it's been really good so far, but what are you thinking of Stargirl? Do you like it? Do you hate it? And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, and all of that. And I hope you have an amazing day.